It's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered. And in last week's episode, I answered another question from our readers. And the question last week was part seven of my 57-year-old dad has been in intensive care with cardiomyopathy and pneumonia for five weeks. He's still in an induced coma and still doesn't have a tracheostomy. You can check out the answer to last week's question by clicking on the link below this video. <clears throat> In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer the next question from our client, Gary, who's also one of our readers. And the question basically this week is part eight of my 57-year-old dad has been in intensive care with cardiomyopathy and pneumonia for five weeks. He's still in an induced coma and still doesn't have a tracheostomy help. This series of questions from Gary are excerpts from numerous one-on-one -on -one phone and email counseling and consulting sessions with me over a two-month period. Previous questions from Gary you can access below this video in the written version of this blog where I put links to it. Gary and his family went through many challenges while his dad was in intensive care and I felt very privileged helping Gary through this difficult time in his and his dad's life. So Gary writes, Hi Patrick, sorry for the short notice, but are you free now today as soon as possible? I just got a phone call from the ICU and things took a really bad turn overnight. My dad's lungs are really bad again. He's heavily sedated once again. His heart is weak and his blood pressure is down, needing high doses of inotropes again. I spoke with the consultant just now and they said while they will not withdraw care, they are no longer going to give new medication. I'm going to see him later today. What should I do now? Please help from Gary. Here is my response, which is basically a summary of the phone call that took place after Gary's email. Hi Gary, thanks again for your time today. Here's a quick summary of what we've discussed. One of two things I believe might have happened. The cardiomyopathy, which seemed to have improved over the last few days, with decreased inotropic support might have come back. It would also show that it's probably a chronic condition that needed an appropriate long-term approach. As we've discussed, ECMO, ventricular assist device or VAT, or a heart transplant even. Because of the ICU consultants not taking appropriate steps to get a cardiologist involved to refer your dad to a more specialized ICU where ECMO bad or heart transplant would have been an option. They have now little room left in order to treat your dad appropriately. If the cardiomyopathy has come back, your dad has probably gone back into pulmonary edema, which is water in the lungs. They couldn't ventilate him because of that and they had to resedate him back into an induced coma. It really also depends on how badly the pneumonia is and 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 how the pneumonia initially was when your dad first went into hospital and if they were able to cure it completely or whether it has come back in any case the combination of pulmonary edema or water in the lungs and pneumonia tends to be a recipe for having difficulties in ventilating critically ill patients in intensive care hence the need for sedation. Next, your dad might have become septic, 
sepsis is basically a severe infection. And that could be because he developed a ventilator associated pneumonia or he has acquired an infection from his lines. For example, his central line or arterial line, as well as from the tracheostomy. Treatment options obviously for the cardiomyopathy would be the inotropes as previously discussed. And if that doesn't work, and escalation to ECMO or VAD or even heart transplant. But once again, Gary, a three bed ICU is too small and they just don't simply have the volume, the experience, the know-how, the equipment and the staffing resources necessary to deal with such a complex situation appropriately and most importantly in your dad's best interest. Unfortunately, they have let you and your dad down very early on and now it looks like it's too late to get your dad in a situation where he could benefit from advanced treatment options because his long stay in intensive care without appropriate treatment options being available has taken its toll on him. Treatment options for the sepsis would be intravenous antibiotics and regular line changes. By that I mean a central line and an arterial line should be changed every seven days. The same applies for his catheter. His urinary catheter should be changed every four weeks and is also a risk for infection. It's good to hear that your dad was in good spirits until yesterday. This is great to hear and something to build on. It's also something you should use if the consultants bring it up, bring up a withdrawal of treatment. Never forget that your dad is only 57 years of age and wants to live. I've also sent you a link to an ebook that you should check out. The five things you need to know if the medical team in intensive care wants to limit treatment or withdraw treatment. I've put a link below this video in the written version of this blog to this ebook. You might want to check it out. On the other hand, Gary, now that they had to resedate your dad once again, especially since he was conscious in the last few days and in what you describe as good spirit, as good spirits, it's a shame to see him going backwards again. Sedation and induced coma should always be minimized as much as possible, as you can imagine. And again, given that your dad didn't have a tracheostomy for nearly five weeks, and therefore was left in an induced coma for way too long, speaks volumes about their duty of care. Your dad's chances, <coughs> excuse me, your dad's chances of survival would have been maximized if he had come out of the induced coma after a couple of weeks if they had done a timely tracheostomy, but they haven't, as we've discussed in our previous phone calls. Also, Gary, the consultant is now saying that they're not going to withdraw care. Now, from my perspective and from my experience, nobody should ever withdraw care, ever. They might withdraw treatment, but only if you agree to that and only after they have been transparently disclosing all treatment options to you, which is something they still haven't done after two months of your dad being in intensive care. Even if you decide that withdrawing treatment might eventually be in your dad's quote unquote best interest, you still want him to be looked after and cared for. There is once again a huge difference between withdrawing treatment and withdrawing care. Even when treatment is being withdrawn, nobody should ever stop caring for people. If that's what they suggest, then they are failing you and your dad once again on another level. This whole situation turns out to be an absolute nightmare and disaster for your dad and for you. They don't know what they're doing. They're not being open and transparent. And by now, I believe that your dad may not survive this ordeal in ICU because too much time has passed with the ICU team making all the wrong decisions and not asking for outside help. 
it's absolutely shocking what's happening here and I really hope that they may grasp the significance of this whole dilemma that's turning into a debacle. Even if they finally realize that your dad would greatly benefit from a transfer or a referral to another more specialized ICU, another ICU probably wouldn't take him now because I think it's now almost too late. Given the severity of your dad's cardiomyopathy and given the prolonged stay in intensive care without them being proactive. It's very sad and disappointing to see what is happening here, Gary. Get back to me the, with a couple of times and to set up the next phone meeting with the consultant and we can schedule it so that I can talk to him again. Any questions in the meantime, please let me know. No matter what, stay strong and also stay positive. Wishing you and your dad all the very best for now. We speak soon. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? Make informed decisions. Get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly. Whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You get to that all important feeling of making informed decisions. Get peace of mind, control, power and influence. When you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions. Get peace of mind, real power and real control. And how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know while your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control power and influence in your situation. You'll get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. And how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode. And I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one counseling and consulting with me via Skype, over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.